Hi all, I have another fascinating game to show you from the TSEC bonus match 2018 between Leela and Stockfish. So very, very interesting opening choice in, in this game. Leela playing white against Stockfish. And we have actually after e4, e5, knight c3, knight f6, bishop c4, knight takes e4. This leads into the curiously named Frankenstein Dracula variation of the Vienna game. So it was named by Tim Harding, who's a great correspondence uh, chess guru. Uh, I've actually got one of his books like, on the history of correspondence chess. Um, and yeah, he's been involved in also the theoretical aspects of openings with lots of opening books. And he named uh, this variation Frankenstein Dracula because he wanted to express uh, the bloodthirstiness of the character of play as though it was between um, Dracula and, and Frankenstein monster. So let's have a look. Queen h5 threatens checkmate. Knight d6 defends and hits c4. The bishop retreats. We have knight c6, which defends e5. Uh, so we have knight b5 trying to get the knight away from f7. g6 hitting the queen. The queen persists with queen f3 hitting f7 f5 so now knight takes b5 is now threatened but queen d5 so kind of making sure the knight can't move because otherwise queen f7 checkmate queen f6 leaving a weakness of the last move knight takes c7 is possible uh this might actually be a better move than queen e7 which is uh which has also been played and seen before so queen f6 uh, we have knight takes c7 check so black is offering a full exchange sacrifice but that knight is stranded b6 and black has a promising fincetto bishop with tempo on this key diagonal so very very dynamic play this is the end of the book alila plays d3 it's a razor sharp position bishop b7 and here uh yeah lila on this 32 329 network plays a move which is not considered uh, that great uh, it's um, possibly a bit too slow for this position like we saw in the dragon game and it's yeah soon after the opening book this is super crucial uh, time is off the essence here whites won the exchange but black has ferocious looking pieces hit here uh, and this move h4 may be a little bit too slow uh, an idea for example knight f3 gives the idea of bishop g5 so for example knight d4 there's queen takes d4 and then bishop g5 and in this position uh white ends up with a small edge white should be okay there with knight f3 another way of playing it knight takes b6 is also just the same kind of idea knight f3 for bishop g5 uh so say here bishop g5 say this variation Again, it should be about even, but black certainly has great peace pressure. It is very scary, but this move may be a little bit too slow. So this is another interesting test, uh, both this and the game we saw yesterday. If if later IDs of Leela can kind of follow the beaten track of, of what we know from theory a bit more in these very critical positions. Now here, uh, Stockfish plays knight e7. So the knight here on d6 is protecting b7. So this bishop striking across this diagonal. Uh, bishop g5. And actually black gets material now after knight takes d5. Uh, this knight on a8 is still stranded. We have knight takes b6. So keeping that pin on the queen for a moment. Uh, if bishop takes f6, the knight on d5 can recapture that. And black's getting a big advantage. Uh, so we have knight takes b6, bishop takes d5, but now comes queen takes g5. And in fact, black is getting two pieces now for a rook. So that's actually quite good. There are pawns for it. So there's quite a few pawns, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, an extra pawn. But also often this move, because there's very uncomfortable pressure on g2, here i mean maybe on rook h2 there's things like h6 anyway it's it's very uncomfortable but this is structural damage stockfish takes on f3 and plays knight f7 and that f7 pawn is is very vulnerable it's dropping off
So black's actually doing really well now. A4. Uh, it's pointless trying to defend it. There's things like bishop e7 on rook g1. So knight takes g5, c3. We have king c7, a5. The two rooks don't seem that great here. And black pushes that trump card. That past h pawn is extremely dangerous here. A takes, king takes, rook a4, h4, white castles. This pawn is taken, king h1, king b7, b4, h3. So actually, this is a very, very dangerous pawn. It would be a form pawn, especially if there was a pawn on h2. Rook f a1, uh, which does threaten perpetual check, but bishop d6 parries that. If black plays, uh, for example, rook h4, then it's just perpetual check time. Uh, so bishop d6. Now check king c8 is played. Pardon me. Let me dismiss that <laughs> alert. Rook. Okay, so uh, here after check king c8, rook 7 to a6. We have actually a really superb move from Stockfish, which is a sparkling finish in my view and one which intrigued me because I, I I'm not sure if I've seen this exact kind of idea before tactically for a, <clears throat> a mating net it's almost as if it's one of those tactical sequences where it's probably easier to get clarity by reverse engineering the dream position you want tactically for a mating net can you can you reverse engineer a position uh, where the rook, knight, and pawn form an irresistible mating net, and then maybe try and get there. If I give you five seconds to pause the video, so what? What would you dream up? What position with the knight, pawn, and rook, and then you might determine Black's next move. So if I give you five seconds again, okay. Stockfish doesn't have to reverse engineer anything. It can calculate the whole thing. Rook h4, incredible, just giving up the bishop. And it's, yeah, this is absolutely, after rook takes d6, this is absolutely winning after rook g4. The idea is to put the rook on g2, and then rook h2 is checkmate. And if the knight can't be touched, this can't be stopped. Uh, we have this. Rook g2, threatening checkmate. What can white do? Check here, check king d8, and the game's ended here. Yeah, white's getting mated. Uh, so, for example, check king e7, and then white's getting mated after rook h2, checkmate. Yeah, so it was a nice finish. you got to give credit to Stockfish. It's, it's really uh, in these very tactical openings where. Uh, the theory we need to know is over the ball players. If Lilo can't recreate that theory, there's big, big trouble in these lines. Already, you know, in this opening, uh, Black's got a lot of potential counterplay for the exchange sacrifice. That's why the need for precision, it, the difficulty of playing the position, really goes up high. So just like with the Dragon game. So it's just another angle I think we should be aware of that a lot of training of these neural networks are needed if they're ever going to uh, be able to explore really well uh, this this highly trodden cultural history we have in these openings uh, to recreate the moves that we've established through hard analysis and practice. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this uh, game video and this game finish. I thought it was quite a pretty finish. Anyway, so um, if you did, please click on the top left box, which should appear shortly to come member at chessmold.net. Play against other YouTubers. You can also check the YouTube analysis for these games in advance or, or later when they're updated from the improved menu. Learn from the Masters YouTube order button. Comments, questions, donations, see the description. Like, share, subscribe with that notification bell, especially. Really appreciated. And check out the new Teespring store. There's a King's Crusher t shirt now available. Okay, thanks very much.